Today I'm joined by Noah Cosby, a racing driver for Team Brit. Once dreaming of a future in professional freestyle motocross, a jump ended with an unforeseen injury and a broken back which changed his path. Supported by the Matt Hampson Foundation, Noah then discovered Team Brit and a new opportunity to follow his passion. Using the team's innovative hand control technology, Noah can drive without the use of his legs. And becoming a race driver and being in the car has given Noah the same love and rush that motocross once gave him. With lots of exciting things coming up with Team Brit, follow me through the life of Noah Cosby. So we're going to go back a little bit today. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to start somewhere towards the beginning of where you feel most resonates with kind of your story and who you are. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I'd say going back to a couple of years ago, 16, and just starting A-levels, actually. And uh, free Somos Cross had become a like, huge part of my life, and I was starting to look at it as a career and getting things sorted to go abroad once I'd finished A-levels and start riding and training with riders across the world, and everything was going great basically uh until covid hit and basically yeah i couldn't couldn't ride for i think it was about three months i didn't ride and then the first day we were all let back out i was like oh, i need to go ride uh and i thought oh, okay just to make everything as safe as it could be you know i made the gap usually at 75 foot I shortened it to about 50, just, you know, because I thought, just make everything as, well, if anything did go wrong, it won't be as bad. That was the ironic part, because, uh, yeah, it landed, landed deep on my first jump, and just broke my back, and from, that's kind of where everything started for all of this. Yeah. So what exactly, if you don't mind going into it, what exactly happened in the accident? Uh, no, of course not. Uh, I Yeah, I landed deep into the landing and broke my back at T6 and T7 vertebrae. Basically, as I came down, they both smashed the plate in the middle and then kind of pulled apart and then came back together. And that stretched my spinal cord going through the middle of my spine. And then instantly, I was, I actually, I winded myself at the same time and I thought, well, that was all that was wrong. So when you wind yourself, it feels like you're dying. Um, as my mates came over, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I was just really winded. Uh, and then I went to go stand up and uh, nothing was working. I was like, right, okay, this is a bit more serious than I thought. Uh, but I didn't really accept. I didn't really, it was all it was like, just like I was in shock at the moment. And I thought, nah, this isn't, this isn't what's happening. Uh, but yeah, I just yeah kept trying to get up and wouldn't work, and my back started being agony. We called the ambulance. Uh, they came. They also sent a helicopter, but the they basically it got above me, and they sent it away. And they said that they told everyone around that my injury isn't bad enough, which at the time was a relief. We were like, oh, good. Uh, but they took me in the ambulance straight to Stoke Mandeville. Uh, and Dope basically did a quick check over me and was like, no, this is really bad. He's damaged his spinal cord quite badly. He needs to go get surgery straight away. So I got back in the, back in the ambulance with like no pain meds or anything because they couldn't find a vein. Uh, so that was, that was fun. They took me to John Radcliffe in Oxford, which was, yeah, about an hour, an hour away. And then basically I went straight into a six hour surgery on my spine to put uh, two, two rods and nine screws in, basically support everything. And then I woke up like a while later and uh, that's kind of when everything hit me that this is very serious and kind of, you know, life altering. Mm. I mean, it's not that much long ago now, is it? Um, if you've talked no. about it, so yeah, yeah. And how 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 then? Obviously, it's life altering. Yes. So how how did you take it at the time then? I I was, I think I was massively in denial. I couldn't. I didn't really accept that 
this was how serious it was. And also I think that was partly because I didn't know actually myself. No doctors had spoken to me. All I knew, when I was going into surgery, I thought, oh, I'm going to surgery for them to fix me. I'm going to come out and, you know, going to have to recover for a little bit and then I'll be, everything will be fine. Uh, I had no idea what even a spinal cord injury entailed. Uh, so it was, and yeah, once I came out of surgery, uh, my organs inside actually kind of shut down for quite a long time and then that was a whole problem and I wasn't all there. So the first kind of two weeks since after surgery, I don't really remember much of because I was just completely out the whole time because they were trying to uh, feed me and help things basically get started up again because the level of my injury, everything else had shut down. Um... But yeah, yeah, and it was, I was just, I think after that, it all became quite, it started to be like, right, this is a big thing. I can't get off my feet, I can't walk. Um, and just the first thing I thought about was what I'm going to do to get back to where I was, and, you know, start, start again. And I was stubborn and thinking, this isn't it, this isn't it forever. And I still am. Uh, but obviously accepted accepted more things nowadays. But yeah, I think uh, just at the beginning I was very stubborn and in denial of actually what happened to me. I think that's probably pretty normal. Um, I think, you know, whatever people are going through, they're probably in denial. Um, some shorter, some longer times than others. Um, but I think it's interesting because I guess even though you said there's acceptance, there's almost still this, whether it's denial, whether it's hope, there's still some sort of hope in a way of, and even just, you said, trying to get back to, trying to get back to something from before, you know, whatever it might be. And the fact that you had that, that quite early on um, to show, right, I'm gonna, you know, I wanna, I wanna do this in, in however way possible. And how, how did you see getting back to before? You know, what, what was that thought for you? Uh, it was it just the love for the things that I feel like I might not get again. Uh, skateboarding and, yeah, most cross were the two biggest things. So, you know, I was not going to, like, like roll over and accept that, that they're not going to happen again. So I think it was just thinking about that. And it was it was too much for me to let them go. So... You know, I was stubborn enough to think you know, it's not it's not happening. I need to just get on with it right now instead of just you know can't sulk. Just go get on with it. You know, and also I was I knew that I was the one that had put myself in this situation. You know, I hadn't been crossing a road and hit by a car or something. It was I knew this was a possibility. I knew this was something could have happened, and there was no one to blame. It was all myself, and I felt like that made it a lot easier to just be then accepting and be like, right, I've done this. It's not a, a why me situation. I know why, because I was doing a really dangerous sport. Uh, and that I think that helps me just get on with, you know, grabbing the ball by horns and just trying to, trying to see what where I can go. I think that a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people wouldn't be able to almost sit there and say, well, you know, I know this is because of something I did. Um, and if there was someone in a similar position to you in a way, and they had done it, you know, through a sport that they were doing, but they couldn't almost accept the, but I, you know, I, I did this, you know, I, I, I was doing the sport, you know, they were more in that why me stage. What would you say to them? Uh, that's a really hard one because obviously everyone is mm -hmm. super different and I, I can completely empathize with how difficult something like this is. It's obviously because I've been through it, but it's, it, it is really hard, but I think you just got to either be told or know that if you're sat thinking, you know, kind of why me, it's, to me, as brutal as it kind of is, it's it's happened. You you're not going to go back in time and you know get things redone. So I think the only thing you can do to help yourself is actually try 
pick yourself up as much as you can, regardless of how you feel. I mean, it's like dragging yourself to the gym when you don't feel like it. At the beginning, it's awful. It sucks. It's it hurts. It's horrible. Then after it, and once you get into more of a routine of doing like doing that, it starts to make you feel better mentally. You're better physically. You'll start to get stronger and recover better. You'll start to see things come back. Uh, and I just think overall, it's one of those things that you need to be really hard on yourself and start to you know just force yourself to do stuff that you really don't want to. And in the long run, I think everyone will be very. Uh, they'll be grateful that they actually started earlier than later, sooner rather than later. Yeah, well, it's gratitude. Yeah. It's gratitude, isn't it? It's having some sort of gratitude, even you know wherever it is along your journey, um, to just you know whatever that you can find or hold on to in the days as well. Um, and then, how did yeah. you how how did you come across Team Brett? Uh, that was, uh, I was, I was very lucky. I, one of my friend's dads was an ITV presenter or is, and he did a, he did a piece on team Brit and he was talking to Aaron Morgan, the, uh, the, one of their McLaren drivers and Aaron had a very similar story to me, broke his back on a cross bike when he was 15 and they were talking and this made obviously my dad's friend I mean, my friend's dad, uh, think of me and he started explaining to Aaron about my story and Aaron basically was just like, oh, give him my contacts, uh, here they are. So I got them through uh, him and I sent Aaron a couple emails basically being like, oh, it's really awesome. I didn't realize racing was a, something you could do in this uh, situation. He got back to me and he was super friendly and he's like, yeah, we'd love to get you down for a track day, see how everything works and all that. And then uh, it went quiet for a bit because I, I got busy with some other things and I'm sure he's constantly busy. Uh, and I was actually here where I am right now, which is up in my uh, physio foundation, Matt Hampson Foundation. And he was coming up for a Christmas dinner thing that was here. And I was the only one staying in the lodges, so I was all alone up here. And I had to give him the keys to, my, to the other one. I didn't know, I was just told to let someone in, introduce myself, but it turned out to be Aaron, and I was like, it was super random, but it ended up being, you know, meant to be, and it's like, we ended up, you know, hanging out and talking about everything, and that's where it all snowballed, so I finally met him, completely out of the blue, and uh, he got me in contact with the founder of the team, uh, Dave, Dave Player, and they offered me a rookie spot. And I snatched it up because, you know, it was super exciting and still is. Yeah, that's how it all, that's how it all happened. And how is it being a part of Team Brett then? How, how do you feel it's changed, you know, whatever aspect of your life? It has been honestly the, the best thing. My mental health, I'd say the most, uh, just getting back to doing something that gives me the same feeling that riding did. Uh, it's, it's like empowering as well. Cause being in the car racing, able-bodied people that you completely forget about your injury. It's I, once I'm in the car, you know, I feel like I'm completely equal to everyone else. And, uh, that's a big thing for me. It's like me to, that I've had to like battle for the whole time. It's just kind of, I feel a lot less than I did before, which I know is like silly. I shouldn't think that way, but it's inevitable. It's going to come through your head. Uh, and being in the car uh, takes that all away. And it it makes me feel like me before my crash again, which is, I, I, I don't know what else could give that to me. And uh, it's also something, yeah, something to focus on, something to train for. And I, I really enjoy, you know, putting my mind something and just repeat, repeat, repeat until I can get as good as I can. And racing was a new thing to me. I'd never, I mean, I haven't even been driving. I, I got my driver's license last year, so uh, last October, so I haven't been driving a year. So racing cars is all super new to me and it's so exciting learning a whole different sport. And I obviously want to get as good as I can. So just honestly in every aspect of it is just amazing 
me. I couldn't say anything better. Um, it's really nice because obviously if people are listening, they can't visually see this, but when you were explaining that, I could see, I could see the smile on your face and I could see the authenticity and the, you know, how genuine it really was, which was, which was, it was making me smile. It was very nice to see. Um, and you know, what's nice is or nice, but you were saying how obviously after everything had happened, the first thing you wanted to do was just, you know, have some sort of, you know, normality or what, you know, felt the same way that you had felt before. And then you just said that driving brings that back. It brings back the feelings that you had doing your other sports. And it's finding those things that, that remind you of who you are in a way. And they can be so different, um, take you on completely different paths and journeys, but you can almost find things that once made you feel one way, whatever it is, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever story you have, you can still find things that made you feel the same way before, but they might be something completely different. Um, and that's what has just been, yeah, it's been so exciting because, you know, I, I was, yeah, racing I'd never thought of. I mean, my, my dad used to race, uh, so did my granddad, so it was in the family, but I uh, never took to it like they did because, you know, I, I'd already found skateboarding and bikes I adored already, and they gave me that feeling. Uh, but then coming to moving to that since this kind of accident that I didn't know was going to happen and how everything's kind of fallen into place, I've realized it is something I could have been passionate about ages ago, and it's something that still resonates with my old self, if you want to say it like that, uh, before my accident, because it does feel like there was uh, like a Noah before the accident and there's Noah now. To me, that, that's kind of two different halves, but the racing starts to you know bring them back together again, and that that's a really, yeah, that's an amazing feeling. So did you ever think you would be a race car driver? <laughs> no, and I absolutely love that my dad and granddad were. I um, yeah, it was something that like I always love, like tell my mates and stuff and show them photos. But it, it was I thought it was so cool. They raced Ferraris and uh, I was like, oh, that's like awesome. But I never thought it was even a thing you could do. I'd, just, you know, all of that. And yeah, now I'm actually doing it. It makes me. I think, yeah, dad's absolutely over the moon and uh, <laughs> it makes me like you know, carry on racing, which is, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, carrying on through the generations, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. My brother next. <laughs> and I think, yeah. I think also what you were talking about is, you, you know, there was the Noah before the accident and then you said the Noah now. And there are links, you know, whether it's the feelings that you still have that you get now that you had, you know, when you were biking before, there are still links. And I think what's very important is that people, you know, everybody, when, again, they're going through something, there can be a Noah before and a Noah now and, you know, that person before and that person now. And I think the transition is extremely difficult people don't want to let go of the past their old self for whatever it is but kind of letting go or even accepting that there's now an old version of you and then there's a new version of you it just it kind of helps bring you more into the new version and you know absolutely you can still relate to a lot of the things from your old self and you can still feel a similar feelings for things but the old self and the new self, it's, it's a real thing. Um, it's a real thing. I felt it. It's a real thing. And you can look back on the old self and the old life per se, because sometimes they can feel like two different lives for people, but you can almost look back and you can see, okay, well, everything that happened there happened and it's got me to who I am now. And this is my new start. You know, this is my new journey, even though you can relate and there's so many things you can take. It's the new journey. Yeah, yeah, you're, that's a great point, yeah. I feel like that was one of the hardest things at the beginning was letting go, you know, what I was before because, uh, I mean, based around everything I did physically, that was who I felt I was and I feel like it was really hard to kind of, you know, let that go and, right, I need to start, I need to start over and 
find other things that I love. Uh, and that was really hard to let go. Not that I have completely let go. I still absolutely love the things I did, but letting go to the point where I can heal and move forward and be happy again in another with other interests and in a kind of different life that was that was yeah definitely a big thing but having like this racing that i found which i never thought i'd do resonating with the old self is it is a new thing that I've, has come out of this situation but it's also something i realized I, my old self would love as well so that's yeah nice yeah and then I just want to ask, and obviously mentally, um, it's it's a very different kind of journey. Um, and how you know, how have you taken all of that on? It, I don't know. I think, like I said earlier, I'm very I'm very stubborn when it comes to challenges for myself. So I didn't really want to ever let this beat me, or maybe at least I didn't want to show that it would beat me. So on the outside, I've always kept a, a super positive attitude. Anyone I'm talking to, I'll always be like, oh, I know this is things that happen and I'm, I can move forward and all of this. But obviously behind closed doors, no one's a, like that great. So uh, it was, it's been, it, it's incredibly hard, but uh, family and friends, massively, as cliche as that is, it's, it's true. There are people around you that are gonna help you get through things. And I do, I personally take quite a lot of on board on my own and I like to sort it out by myself. And it's, it's just a journey of accepting, I think, and find like, like literally, yeah, finding, letting the old stuff go and finding new things that you can love. And I think that's what I've found the hardest was just accepting because of how stubborn I was with no this is not it this is not happening and I still do have that that part of me that's you know I'm going to get back up one day regardless of how it is I don't know if scientist makes me great or I just naturally heal because I've got an incomplete injury all the chances but god knows but or I kind of accepted things it was like right I'm not doing anything until I'm back to myself but I need to live I still need to obviously live a life so I need to accept it kind of in the time being and get on with other things uh, and I think that's yeah right now is honestly the happiest and best place I've been mentally since since the, the accident and it's been obviously fluctuating ups and downs but right now I honestly feel the best I have in a long long time Oh, well, that, yeah, it's really nice to hear. And, you know, again, it, it, it's, I guess it is up and down, isn't it? Um, and I think that's also another really important point to make is that, you know, it, it is up and down. And it's really nice to hear that, you know, you are, you know, you're kind of very happy, which is nice. Um, and I want to ask then with, with, with that and what you're talking about and acceptance and letting go and, if there is somebody that's at that stage where they they don't want to accept it yet or they they don't really you know know how to accept it and they don't want to let go of the old self or they don't want to let go of things i know again everyone's stories are very different and it can you know everyone's situations are very different but what is kind of an overall or what would you say to somebody i think uh take your own time don't try force anything on yourself otherwise it'll make you more unhappy uh but there is still there's the difference between forcing yourself to do something or pushing yourself i think uh there is regardless of whatever happens you're still going to be that same person you're still all there and you're still the same person you were you just you know you're not up on your feet and I think that was a big thing I had to get over was I didn't feel myself in my head. I couldn't accept myself for being the same person, but I eventually got around. I'm still, I'm still the same person before. It's just a bit of a different scenario and I need to make that work. So I think it takes time and it's not something that's going to happen straight away, but I think you need to have trust in yourself as a person that 
you can still be you and you will get to a place where you can be happy again. And I think it's just uh, trusting yourself and having enough, you know, push to think that you can do it. Then, yeah, I think that's, that's the best I can say. It's a really hard one because it is, it's, it's heavy, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. I... Pardon? Yeah, if I, I was like, if I can get it, get through it, I can literally. I think the, the trusting in yourself is uh, trusting in yourself is a really difficult thing to do. Um, but yeah, I think it's 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 just trying to start. Um, definitely. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, and that's the thing I'm saying it now because it's, but it, it's been two years and I'm only just of working that out. You know, I need to trust that I'm gonna. I, I'm still me, so yeah, I'm not at all saying it's easy and it's something that's going to happen overnight. It all takes a ton of time and going through lots of things. And like we said earlier, it's up and down, and you're going to be at really low points. And you're going to get to points that, you know, they're better, still not great. It's just having the perseverance to keep on, keep on going, regardless of how bad it gets, because one day it will go back up. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It will go back up. And I think, again, it's, you're right, it, it's not going to happen overnight. And it can take some people one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. Um, but I guess, again, it's trusting in yourself and trusting in what's happening. And, you know, like I said, one, two, three, four, however many years, but kind of if you do keep going. Um, yeah, definitely. Can, start to figure out mm, yeah and it's also I think uh people shouldn't be afraid to reach out for help from whoever it is that's something I am very bad at doing I keep a lot of things inside and think no I've got to do it myself uh, blah, blah blah how can anyone help me but I think well I know it definitely is you're not weak for having to reach out to anyone else because you know, how, talking to someone else about it literally splits the weight on you and it it does help. And I, it took me a long time to work that out. And I reckon that that's why I feel like I do now because I've been just a lot more open about things. I think that's a, that's a huge part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting that you said that because somebody um, once explained to me, they said a problem shared is a problem halved. And you said it in that way as well. You, yeah. you, know, you share it with someone else, it takes you know, half of the weight or at least a quarter of the weight off of you. Exactly. Yeah, actually, you do the exact same thing. Someone said that to me, and that's why I said it now. And it is it's true. It helped. So what what have you got coming up then with Team Brett? It's a really exciting uh, time for right now, actually. I've done three quarters of the rookie season and... Team Brit are looking to get me into the BMW uh, M240i, which is uh, a nice, a very fast car. <laughs> it's just, I've been searching for, been looking desperately for sponsorship and people to, you know, help support me. I've been making my case on that and how why they did. Uh, and I've managed to find uh, some that can help me for at least uh, the coming season in the 240, and which means I'll be racing the Brick Car Championship, Brick Car Trophy, which is a lot more serious than what I'm doing at the moment. And, you know, obviously faster, so yay, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> and But uh, way more scary as well. I Last weekend, had a drive in the... BMW 118 that the team has, which is uh, kind of the next step up from the C1. Not as fast as the 240, but it's still rear wheel drive. It's still rear wheel drive and a lot more horsepower. And I was racing Donington. And it was really wet that day. And I got in it, and it was a bit of a shock to the system. It was like, okay, wow, this is this is really proper racing. This is fast and scary and twitchy. But uh, 
I'm I can't. I'm so excited to move up to a fast car. Um, not just because it's a fast car. It's just there's so much more to think about and learn. And like I said, I absolutely love a good challenge or something to get good at. Cause I'm fairly competitive. Uh, I want to be the absolute best I can. But for even though I've got next season uh, kind of locked in to the seat. I still need to find some more sponsorship so that I can test the 240 from now till next year. Otherwise, if I get in the car that powerful without having driven it, it won't be the most successful season. So <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at with right now. I've absolutely loved being with them. Everyone there is like a family. It's they're amazing. And the fact everyone's supporting me to move up into faster championships already is just makes me feel really great so that's everything's going on it's super exciting i just just really looking for people to help me out um yeah <laughs> well if anybody's listening you know and they want to help you out they can help you out <laughs> yeah god that would be that would be amazing uh, but yeah, i'm working on a lot of different things but it's sponsorship is a nightmare so yeah i'm lucky enough to be where i am already so. Yeah, well, it sounds like, you know, like you said, you want to be the best of the best and you're competitive. It's just, you know, stay headstrong, I guess, and just keep going and you'll get there. Exactly, yeah. And I'm um, really positive about that. Yeah, it sounds like there's lots of exciting things coming. So, yeah, that's very cool. Thank you, yeah. So is there anything else that you want to discuss today? <laughs> uh, every time someone's asking this. It, I just everything goes out of my head. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I feel like I've I've covered but a fair good point, a few good points uh, from yeah when it started all the way till I guess yeah right now. I've uh, I Matt the like I mentioned earlier the Matt Hampson Foundation is uh, kind of where I met uh, Aaron and also they've been. They've been another huge part of me getting back to where I am now, because they've helped me with physio and help. Like I can now stand up on my own. Um, I'm just trying to take steps with physios. I'm doing other physios, but trying to take steps on my own. And uh, there's I've got a PT up, uh, James Sutliff, and he's just it's been the best thing for me. Being in the gym and getting to a much better physical state has been just massive for my head because that was a big part before my accident, you know, keeping fit and healthy. So I think I just need to give the Matt Hampson Foundation their praise of what they're doing for people in my situation and anyone that's feeling a bit lost or anything in with a spinal cord injury or any injury, to be honest, um, I highly recommend reaching out and uh, trying to, yeah, reaching out to Matt Hampson Foundation. They will help you and uh, it, it, they're, they're, the, they're the best thing as well. In the world as well. So I think that's the only other thing I, I can think of right now to add. As soon as we'll go, I'll be like, oh, I should have said that. But, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of gratitude here. I can I can feel that there's quite a lot of gratitude. Oh, well, good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah well it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you today thank you for joining me thank you for joining me noah his story reminds us that setbacks can be stepping stones to new beginnings and adventures so this week think about the way that something from the past once filled you up with happiness love and excitement whether it's a sport a hobby a job anything and it is no longer part of your life you believe you won't ever find that feeling again but why do you believe that Noah's story shows us that you can feel that excitement and more all over again, but this time with something completely different. So stay open to opportunities and trust in yourself. You have no idea what can show up tomorrow and fill you up once again. So stay tuned for more incredible stories and thank you for joining us. Until next time, remember that you have the power to get back up. <laughs>